do the beef cuts mean and where do they come from? That's a great question, and I bet one many people ask themselves when they're at the grocery store. As you can see from this diagram, the body of the steer is divided into sections. These sections, called primal cuts, vary in tenderness and in fat content. The front shoulder, known as the chuck, gives us chuck roasts, pot roasts, and blade roasts. Since these cuts are for muscles that are made up of proteins that must be strong in order to support the weight of the steer, the meat from these muscles should be slow cooked or marinated to ensure tenderness. Next, as you can see, is the rib, the short loin, and the sirloin sections. This is where the premium steaks come from, including most of the steaks you'd find on a restaurant menu, like the ribeye, the top sirloin, filet mignon, porterhouse, and of course the T-bone steak. These steaks are all naturally tender because they come from a portion of the steer's body that doesn't have to support the weight of the animal. The round at the very back of the steer gives us meat that is best cooked under low heat, slowly, like pot roast, rump roast, top and bottom round roast. The flank and short plate areas yield cuts that are generally considered value cuts and require longer cooking methods. The exception to that, though, is the skirt steak, which can be cut very thinly and cooked rapidly under high heat. The skirt steak is the type of steak we normally consume as fajitas. The four shank and the brisket yield the whole brisket and the corn brisket, as well as the flat brisket. Given that these are from the front chest region of the steer, slow cooking, preferably under moist heat, is a must. When these cuts are trimmed off the carcass, the remaining pieces of meat that are really too small to be consumed as steaks and roasts are now known as lean beef trimmings. These lean beef trimmings are combined with fat trimmings in different proportions and ground together to make hamburger. That is why hamburger has varying levels of protein and fat, like 90-10, 80-20, and 70-30. This allows the consumer to purchase the type of hamburger he or she prefers. This 1,200-pound steer you are looking at here produces approximately a 750-pound carcass, which yields roughly 500 pounds of meat that can be made into a variety of safe and nutritious beef products.